About four years ago, DJI introduced this, the Action 2, a camera way ahead of its time, packing top-of-the-line features into a tiny form factor, but it did have one key issue. Overheating. Well, now four years later, we finally have the successor, the new Osmo Nano, which just like its predecessor is a powerhouse of a camera all housed into a tiny form factor. But this time, Really? Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a follow-up to my previous video in which we talked about battery performance and endurance on the new DJI Osmo Nano. And in that video, we did touch on the topic of overheating. Well, as promised in today's video, we're going to explore that topic in more detail. We'll talk about when and under what circumstances you're likely to experience overheating. We'll talk about how much of an issue it really is and some of the things that you can do to try to avoid it. Now, just to be clear, I'm not here to bash the new Osmo Nano. On the contrary, I think it is an excellent camera with top performance, but there are so many videos out there that seem to only talk about the positive aspects. I do feel it's important to have that balance and bring up issues like this so hopefully they can be addressed. So there's a lot to cover. So as usual, I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but first this. Before we continue with today's video, a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. Now I do include links to the featured products as well as my recording equipment. These may appear throughout the video and in the video description. If you purchase using these links, I may make a commission and this is what helps fund the channel. But rest assured, there is no price disadvantage to you, you are getting the best price I can find. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel, you could follow this link and buy me a coffee. And of course, if you enjoy today's video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So back to the video. Over the past couple of weeks, I have performed test after test after test on the new Osmo Nano, and as with any good experiment, it's important to document the conditions. Now, all of my testing has been done in the same basement room with a very stable temperature of around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, so all of the tests were performed under comparable conditions. Now, of course, if you're planning to do your recording in higher temperatures than this, maybe even in direct sunlight, you can expect a higher probability of overheating. And conversely, if you're out in the snow or colder temperatures, then it won't be such an issue. Secondly, it's important to point out that my tests were based on a continuous recording. So basically, I hit the start button and we continued recording until either the battery ran out or until we experienced overheating. And of course, this is not typically the way you would do your recordings. So clearly, if you are recording intermittently instead of continuously, you should expect to get slightly longer run times. And thirdly, because the tests were performed indoors, all of the tests, at least until later in the video, were performed in the absence of any significant airflow, which, as you'll see later on, is a significant factor when it comes to reducing overheating. So, as you know, the Osmo Nano is basically two cameras in one. You have the standalone camera, which is your POV or flexible mounting configuration. And then when you want the screen and the extra battery power, you simply mount it to the vision dock. And as it turns out, each configuration has very different overheating characteristics. So we're going to break down the results into two sections, starting with the standalone camera. So when it comes to the standalone camera configuration, the good news is that as long as you are recording standard video up to and including 4K at frame rates of 30 frames per second or lower, you should not have any serious issues with overheating. In all of my 4K 30 tests, I was able to run the camera until the battery was fully depleted. I got around 46 minutes of runtime using 4K 30, or when I switched over to the endurance mode, more about that later on, I was able to extend that to about 66 minutes before once again the battery was depleted. Unfortunately, that's where the good news ends. When I used more challenging modes with higher frame rates, that is when I experienced overheating. 
For example, at 4K 60 frames per second, the camera overheated at a little bit over 24 minutes. And here too, I tried using the endurance mode and was able to extend that to about 41 minutes until the camera overheated. Now, having just shown you that overheating message displayed on the vision dock, which I was using to wirelessly monitor the recording, you might be wondering whether having that wireless connection in place has an impact on overheating. And I would say that it really doesn't have a major impact. I repeated many of the tests, both with the vision dock connected and without. And based on my test results, I would say without the vision dock connected, you might gain just a few seconds, but it really isn't that significant. Moving on from 4K 60, I also tried 4K in the 4x3 format at 50 frames per second, and here the camera overheated after less than 20 minutes. But by far the biggest challenge for the standalone camera was slow motion 4K at 120 frames per second, where the camera overheated after just 6 minutes. Now I think it's important to remember that these are continuous recording times, and particularly in that last case, 4K 120, where you're trying to capture something happening in slow motion, you're probably not going to be recording for six solid minutes. One of the main reasons for connecting your camera to the vision dock is in order to take advantage of the much larger battery capacity and of course get longer run times. So it's quite ironic then that when configured together with the vision dock, for most recording modes you actually get less continuous run time than with the standalone camera. And that of course is due to overheating. And even worse, the overheating issue is not only restricted to the more demanding recording modes. In my testing, at 4K 30 frames per second, the camera would consistently overheat and shut down after around 30 to 35 minutes of recording. Now, when the camera is connected to the vision dock, there are actually two overheating stages, and this is where it gets a little strange. Once again, taking the example of 4K 30 frames per second, typically at around about the 20 minute mark, I would get this message informing me that charging had been paused due to excessive temperature on the camera. But importantly, at this point, the camera was still recording. Now, in this instance, I left the message on the screen, expecting that when charging resumed, it would either disappear or be replaced with a different message. But the message remained on the screen for the rest of the recording, which was about another 15 minutes, at which point the camera stopped the recording and shut down due to overheating. Now, what's interesting here is that even though the camera supposedly was not being charged for the last 15 minutes of this recording, as you can see, the camera's battery is still at 100%. So having given the camera plenty of time to cool down, I resumed the test, and sure enough, once again, around about the 20 minute mark, I got the charging paused message. But this time I tapped on the message to acknowledge and remove it from the screen because I wanted to see the battery levels of both the vision dock and the camera at this point in the recording. And as you can see, the camera is at 100% and the vision dock at 41%. Now this time the camera lasted another 12 minutes before shutting down due to overheating. And as you can see, after these 12 minutes, the vision dock has depleted to 23% and the camera is still at 100%. Now, I'm not quite sure how to interpret this because the message clearly states that charging has been paused, which would make sense because it seems that the camera is not able to handle recording and being charged at the same time, but the message just doesn't seem to be true because at the end of the recording the camera is still at 100%. So I just feel that if DJI could better manage this pausing and resuming of charging, perhaps we could reduce the incidences of overheating and get longer run times. And returning to our 4K30 test results, once again I tried out the endurance mode and this proved to be successful. With endurance mode enabled, I was able to record almost two and a half hours before both the camera and vision dock batteries were fully depleted. Now here too, I did also get the charging paused warning, once at around about 40 minutes, and again at around about one and a half hours. But apparently when recording 4K30 in endurance mode, it is able to recover from this. Moving up to 4K 60 frames per second, not surprisingly the run times were quite a bit shorter. At 4K 60, we got the charging pause message at around about 16 minutes with the camera fully shutting down due to overheating about 7 minutes later at 23 minutes. 
Switching to endurance mode at 4K60 did help extend those run times a little bit, but unlike at 4K30, it did not prevent overheating. Using 4K60 endurance mode, we got the charging paused message around about the 21 minute mark, with the camera continuing to record until overheating around about 39 minutes. And finally, with the camera plus dock configuration, we also ran 4K at 120 frames per second, and here we actually managed to outperform the standalone camera, getting to over 7 minutes of recording time before overheating. In this section, we're going to take a look at some of the things you can do in order to avoid overheating, or at very least give you more recording time until the camera overheats. And the first of these is something I'll just refer to as lowering your standards. So basically, choosing recording settings, which yes, ultimately will reduce your overall video quality, but they will also draw less power on the camera, which in turn will reduce heat generation. Now, we already saw examples of this earlier on when we talked about endurance mode. Now, DJI doesn't provide a lot of detail about endurance mode, but there are two key quality settings that endurance mode impacts. The bitrate, which can be either high or standard, and the color depth, which can be either 10-bit or 8-bit. And whenever endurance mode is enabled, the camera forces you to use the standard bitrate setting and 8-bit color. So by using it, you are definitely sacrificing video quality. Now, instead of reducing the bitrate and color depth, or perhaps in addition to doing those things, you may also want to consider dropping your resolution. Depending on what you are recording, perhaps you don't need 4K resolution, maybe 2.7K or even 1080p is good enough, and choosing a lower resolution will definitely reduce heat generation. And of course, the same is true for frame rates. As we saw through some of the examples earlier on, increasing the frame rate increases heat generation and can drastically accelerate overheating. Now, typically when you're using higher frame rates, you're trying to do something specific, so it's not as simple as saying just drop the frame rate, but perhaps when doing intermittent recording over extended periods, perhaps space out the high frame rate sections in order to help keep the camera cool. Now, if you'd rather not sacrifice any quality, there is one very effective solution to help reduce or eliminate overheating, and that is airflow. Now, in order to test the impact of airflow, I set up several of the tests that we did earlier on, but this time I added a fan in order to create airflow across the surface of the camera. Now, this was nothing extreme, just a battery-operated fan, and I set it at its lowest setting in order to create just a very gentle airflow across the camera's surface. And by doing so, in pretty much all cases, I saw a significant improvement. For example, with the standalone camera running at 4K60, if you recall, we were getting overheating at around about 25 minutes. And when I reran the same tests with the gentle airflow, I was able to record for almost 45 minutes until the battery was fully depleted with no incidences of overheating. Also, with the standalone camera, if you recall, when running 4K at 120 frames per second, the best I could get was around about 6 minutes of runtime, and when running the same test with gentle airflow, I was at least able to get to over 9 minutes of runtime. Switching to the camera plus vision dock combination, if you recall from earlier, even when recording at 4K 30 frames per second, we were getting overheating every 30 to 35 minutes. And here too, with the introduction of a gentle airflow over the camera, we were able to record for almost two and a half hours without any incidents of overheating. And one final example of the camera plus vision dock is 4K 60 frames per second. If you recall from earlier, we saw overheating after just 23 minutes. But when introducing our gentle airflow, the camera did still overheat, but lasted over three times as long at around about 70 minutes. Going back to the Action 2 again for a moment, about four years ago when users were complaining about overheating issues, DJI came up with this, a heat dissipating case, which they made available free of charge to all Action 2 users. And it did help, in some cases almost doubling the amount of runtime before overheating. So it was very interesting then when I found this in the box together with my new Osmo Nano, the so-called protective case. 
And it raises the obvious question, is this intended to help with the overheating issue? Now, if you take a look in the manual, there's not a whole lot of detail about it, but it sounds like it's more designed to protect me than it is to protect the camera. But of course, this test would not be complete without trying this out, so of course I had to do that. Starting with the standalone camera, and the first test I tried was 4K at 120 frames per second, and although it's not a lot, it did allow me to get about an extra minute of recording time. So next up, I tried 4K 60 frames per second, and here it actually made the problem worse. If you recall from earlier, using the standalone camera at 4K 60, I was able to get around 25 minutes of recording time, but unfortunately with the cover in place, that number reduced to just over 20 minutes. Connected to the Vision Dock, once again I started out by trying 4K 120, and here it fared a little bit better than the standalone camera, improving my runtime by over 2 minutes. So next up I tried it at 4K 30, and found that it made absolutely no difference whatsoever, with the camera overheating in the same 30-35 to 35 minute window as we saw without the cover. So the verdict on the cover, it might help you get an extra minute or two at 4K 120, but besides that, not really much help. As I said earlier in the video, the Osmo Nano is an excellent camera. It is a shame though that DJI have not really been able to improve on the overheating issues that we saw with the old Action 2. Now, in fairness, the overheating issues only really occur in two situations, either when you're using the higher demand recording modes, which you typically won't be using for extended periods, or when the camera is charging from the vision dock. And there I am hopeful that DJI can do something with a firmware update in order to improve the charging management. And by the way, in case you missed the caption earlier in the video, all of the tests done in this video were verified using the newest firmware version available at time of recording, which would be this one that I'm displaying on the screen here. So that's pretty much going to cover it for today. If I missed anything, if you have any questions or comments, please drop those into the comment section. Also, if you have an Osmo Nano and you want to share your experience, also drop those into the comments. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.